Hey everyone, this is Anthony Reeves. And you know it's funny, I didn't realize this, but I've been doing a lot of stuff over the years. You know, I've had about a good god ten year run of doing videos, uh, about a good seven year run of doing various podcasts, and you know, I've done a lot. I mean, real talk, you know, I've done a lot. And it's funny because I was talking to someone the other day, they were asking me a question and it kind of caught me off guard because you know, when when looking back, they're like, okay. I noticed that you've gotten a variety of degrees. You've got like three degrees. I'm like, okay. Um, haven't you run your own business? I said, like, yeah. Business. Um, I've had my own law firm. You know, I've run my own law firm. Um, I, I've practiced law for over almost 20 years. Uh, before that, I was a public health official. I also uh, was an officer in the Navy. In addition to the fact that I've got a master's, a bachelor's degree in science, a master's degree in public health, and a doctorate of jurisprudence. You know, I, I was a teacher, both a professor for a period of time. And, you know, I've done a lot of, you know, done choreography. I've done a lot. And so it's funny because I went to this person and they were like, you know, with all the stuff that you've done, and all the videos, we don't really know you. And so I was like, okay, well, what do you want to know? Because I'm pretty much an open book, at least in my mind. And so they asked me a question. They were like, well, what would you change about yourself to get ready for this new world? Or, or, or you know, what, what, are, what are things that you feel positive about in terms of in your life going forward? Or, you know, what are you afraid of? I'm like, you want all that in one sentence? <laughs> and they were like, I'm, they, were, they were like, well, can we at least get a, you know, some ideas? I said, okay, let's take it one step at a time. How about let's talk about things that I'm afraid. Let me talk about how many things? Five. So we're going to talk about five things that I am afraid of or, or my fears. In order to do that, you know, usually I, you know, trying to be professional, you're doing this thing, you're present, you're trying to present a certain way. Let me just show you how I get down. I got a journal. Um, it's kind of funny because yes, it's an, ooh, paper. <laughs> so let's go through the five things that I fear. One is repeating the mistakes of my father. You know, my mom and dad divorced when I was three years old. So of course, you know, the divided lifestyle, you know, you spend time with your mom, spend time with your dad. My mom, who is quite honestly my superhero, you know, I pretty much have mirrored a lot of the things in my decision making about my educational and my professional career based on her. You know, she's a woman who got a bachelor's degree, she got a master's degree, she taught for 30 years. Very creative individual, but she's also very, very, you know, methodical in how she does things. My dad, in the end portion of his life before he passed, my dad got it together. He was a minister for numerous years, well over a couple of decades. He ran a successful nonprofit that worked with kids and Pop Warner. He was recognized by the NFL. He was doing a lot of great things. But see, in the formative years when I was being raised, probably between age five and like nine or 10, even up into my early 20s, my dad had a habit of doing a lot of, he had a lot of get rich quick schemes that he was doing. And don't get me wrong, some of them were very profitable. I mean, he had he had a pool hall that he had for about a year he, or two, I guess, I guess he had an ice cream truck. Don't even get me started on the, on the produce run and the watermelons going up to Chicago from Mississippi, because that's just a whole nother story. But he also ran for political office like four or five times. He sold hair care products. He wanted to put gumball machines in grocery stores. And I'm watching all of this and his circumstances never changed. And, you know, he was always this person who was vibrant, full of ideas, but his circumstances never changed. Try an idea, didn't work, try something else. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some people out there that would say, oh, he's entrepreneurial, he's willing to give it a try. When you're young and you're impressionable and you're seeing someone who you are looking up to constantly trying new things and in your vision, it doesn't look like it's any of them are working at all you know at all you know so in my mind i didn't look at my dad as being a staple of being a success i was looking at my man that my dad as someone who was one of those people who was great coming up with great ideas not a lot of great follow-through and not a lot of great success so guess what i'm anybody who knows me knows that i am always gung-ho to try something new i love trying i'm one of those people if you tell me an idea i will take it i will run with it but I will also tell you that I tend to back up and pull back on certain things because I worry that I that I still have that bug of wanting to get out there and do stuff with no follow through. Now, mind you, I'll be 51 this year. 
I can take you through my life and show you all kind of things that I've done that literally are the exact opposite of what my dad has done, that have had successful followers. But in my mind, I looked at how he did those things in his life in terms of professionally, and I always have that fear. And I still have that fear now of worrying and so forth. My wife has said, God bless her. She's had to rein me in a few times because she keeps saying, you're not your father. But I keep thinking that in my mind that I'm gonna make those same mistakes that he had. Fear number two, not being good enough. Yes, I know it sounds here, but let's, let me back this up a second. My wife always tells me, you are not the 16 year old kid with the Coke bottle glasses, bad hairdo and high water pants. And unfortunately for years, that has been my fear is that I look at myself in that light. You know, when I came up through school, in elementary school, I mean, I'm skipping going into junior high school, we had school, our classes were broken down into three categories. Uh, directed, which were those people who were kind of had difficulty learnings. Regular, which is supposed to be representative of the masses. And then advanced, which were the advanced level classes where the teachers would recommend you for that. I did extreme, I was in the regular class and I did very well in those classes. I mean, I was getting A's and B's, but I never understood why no one recommended me for advanced. I didn't get into advanced level classes until I actually put myself in those classes in high school. And I, by the time I started doing that, I was behind because the kids who were in advanced level classes had been in those classes for the longest. But for a long time, I questioned my value because no one recommended me for those things. When it was time for people to get go to the kids to go to governor's school and the boys and girls, you know, they would take the top students from each school. And I never got invited to any of those things. Even, you know, even when I was in church, there were a few things I never really told mom about it. There were, you know, we had, it was only a certain number of us. And sometimes I wouldn't get, you know, there was certain students, certain you know, youth in our group would get recommended for all kinds of stuff. And I didn't get invited to a lot of that stuff. And for a while I wondered, was it my personality? Was it my attitude? And uh, I, I often wondered in my mind if it was me. You know, I often wondered if by some chance was it, you know, and, and I just wondered, was it me? And it was funny because when I, and this is a true story, when I went to apply for an ROTC scholarship to go to college, I remember this one African-American colonel told me, he says, if you apply for, for scholarships, as an ROTC cadet to go to HBCUs, I guarantee you get a scholarship. If you go and put yourself in the national arena, you're gonna be competing against kids who are, who are valedictorian, salutatorian, you're probably gonna have a tougher time. The problem was he was giving me great advice. But for me, I didn't hear that advice. What I heard him say, what I heard him say was you're not good enough. That's how I took it. Same thing, when I went into college and I was trying different organizations and, and you know, even though I got recognized for being an outstanding leader by the time I graduated, there were so many things along the way where I made bonehead mistakes or things didn't happen and no one came to me. I just really believed in my heart that no one was seeking me out. And I'll tell you, I've carried that on. Uh, and, and which is crazy because if you look at all of the different things, if you talk to anyone who knows me, the countless groups that I've choreographed, the countless events that I plan. I've been on multiple boards of directors. Like I said, I ran my own law firm. I've been elected to, to elected positions where I've literally been put in leadership positions. I have constantly been put in that situation and yet I still question and I still have that fear of whether I'm good enough. So let me see. That's number two. Number three. Oh, different. oh my gosh. Whew. Number three, fear of disappointing your loved one. I have a lot of people who are close to me that I have this horrible ha attitude of believing that I need to be there for them as much as I possibly can, but I don't want them to be there for me because I don't want, you know, they can never disappoint me, but I, it's important that I don't disappoint them. One of my good friends once told me, she said, you have this bad habit in your mind of believing that no one can be as good a friend as you. And I'm like, but, I, and the sad part is that she's right. And it's not because I believe they can't be a good friend to me. It's just that, you know, when you're an only kid, you're either a loner or the people in your life, you hold on and hold them to a high regard. And there was a period of time where I literally felt like I was losing friends because that was some of my bad decision making. So for me, it means a lot to know that I'm not disappointing the people that I love. Fear of surviving the worst case scenario. Several years ago, 
the love of my life, my lovely wife, had a health crisis. And I was running my own firm and it was wild because I was literally driving back and forth. I literally was spending anywhere between two, two to four hours a day on the highway going to the hospital, going to the rehab facility. And I was practicing law out of the lobby of the hospital and the rehab facility and, and in order to survive. And I will tell you, when that was all said and done, one of my good friends told me, he said, you do know that was the worst case scenario. In comparison to whatever you think you may go on in your life going forward, you cannot tell me there's nothing that compares to that. And I survived it. But in my mind, I didn't look at it as if I survived it. I looked at it in the sense of saying, oh my gosh, I put us in this position where we had to, to try to survive. And, and then I spent most of my time worrying about what if I didn't have the things in place? What if I didn't have the insurance? What if I did, wasn't working on my own? What if the money wasn't coming in? I had went through every scenario so that after that whole incident, instead of looking at it as, you survived, I looked at it as if, oh my God, I don't know if I can survive that when I just did. So that, it's been a fear that I've been shaking through for a number of years. And then the final one, it all is, is probably the biggest one, the fear of failure. One of my friends told me, he says, you have an unnatural fear of failure. And I laugh because he's right. Because if you look at everything I've talked about, repeating the mistakes of my father, not feeling like you're good enough, disappointing your friends, um, your fear of surviving the worst. I have, if you look at the decisions that I've made through my life, you would not believe that. And I even had a friend call me on it. She was like, I'm looking at you and you don't think you're a leader, but you've been in multiple leadership positions. You think you can't survive, but you've survived the worst. You don't think you can do this and that, but you have. I don't understand where this is coming from when your life has demonstrated that everything you are afraid, you've overcome. So what are you afraid of? And I said, what's the fear of failure? But the reality is, is that every time you've been faced with it, you still prevail. So what is the key? The key? And the problem that I have is that, and it probably goes down to something that my wife told me, and I had to read it because I always remember her telling me this. She said, at what point are you going to stop running from success? And for a long time, I was like, what does that even mean? The fear of failure, not the, her thing was, I don't think you're afraid of failing. You're afraid of succeeding. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, everybody wants to succeed. She's like, no, no. You have convinced yourself that success is mediocrity. The success is consistency. The success is just doing the status quo like everybody else. Now, don't get me wrong. We all want to be comfortable. We all like continuity. That's nothing wrong with it. But she called me on it and one of my other friends. It's amazing when you have people around your life who call you on stuff. They were like, as soon as I got into a new position, they were like, okay, what are you gonna do next? And I'm like, I don't understand. I'm finally in that position. What are you asking me? What am I doing next? Because you have demonstrated through your life that you are someone who cannot stand still. You are constantly progressing. Your life demonstrates that. Why don't you see it? So that's why my wife is always like, contrary to popular belief, you are meant for great things, but you keep convincing yourself that that is not what you're intended or meant to be. Your fear of failure is you're feeling, you're, you're fearful that you're going to fail to reach your true potential when your true potential is dying for you to try to reach it. So unfortunately, because I because of all those things that I've talked about, because I've always, in my mind, I keep thinking, and this is where it gets worse. And you know, like one of my good buddies talked about comparing myself. He said, why are you comparing yourself to others? I said, because... All the things that my fears have all come in this mindset of looking at others as the standard of what success should be and not and believing in my mind that I haven't done any of those things. When I have, especially in the lives and the minds of people who are around me, but not my own. So I can tell you that with each one of those things, these are the different fears that I've talked about that drive me and that pushes me to try to do better. Those are my five. What are yours?